Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for October 30th, 2022, 2022. We're still in October, almost into November. Some people did their trick or treating last night, some are doing Monday night. But let's talk about some news here. We got some Transformers news, obviously, and a new HasLab. We actually got to see the full pictures of first wave of the Ultimate Super 7 Next Generation Star Trek. Right now, currently, NECA has some pre orders up for. Defenders of the Earth, and an accessory pack for Back to the Future. It's pretty cool. We did get some more reveals and information and stuff for G.I. Joe Classified that we'll talk about. And of course, we have some Star Wars news. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff in the middle. We're going to talk about all this and more coming up. So what's new is shows you there's a fantasy license, uh, Saint Sia building blocks. I don't know exactly what that is, but it looks pretty cool. It's It looks like an action figure, but I don't know if you have to build it. But it says it's 18 and a half inches tall. Pretty cool for $108. They have an upgrade kit for DNA Design DK39 for the Legacy Metroplex. Now this is not going to be on the G1 style one. It's the Legacy one that is for the Cybertron universe. So... Uh, it's an upgrade kit. It's got a couple of cool things, some extra hands, and, an, and a little figure in there. And Unique Toys is putting out the R04C Nero Galvatron clear version. So they've already put out the one on the right in this picture. The one on the left, it's clear. It doesn't look like it's all transparent, though. It looks like it's it's solid at the top and the bottom and clear in the middle. And I'm sure that makes sense. I guess i got to go rewatch the movie. And if I did, this would probably make a lot of sense. But it's up for pre-order right now. All right, so wrapping up a few things from last week. Well, we did get to see this FM02 Marge, Marge, and this is Fans Toys version of an Ultra Magnus with an Optimus Prime on the inside, a white Optimus Prime on the inside. Theoretically, we've only seen grayscale models, but last week there were still people saying it's not going to transform, although it clearly did. They did not release these alt mode pictures right away for some reason. Now they're out, and there it is. It looks pretty good. Fans Toys, fantastic model, whatever you want to talk about, but it looks good from all angles. So we got some Digi Bashes. It looks like Nova Maximus did some Digi Bashes, which is pretty cool. So I do like these when they add some color to the grayscale model, so we kind of have an idea what it could look like. And that does look pretty good overall. There's also a color for Delta Magnus, so if they did decide to put a Delta Magnus out, this is what it could possibly look like color-wise. And so it's really fun to see all of those. What I thought was the most fun was what would their prime look like? Now, this is kind of one of those things. Would they go with silver? Would they go with white? Here's the thing. Hoist holds the key to that. They might do silver. So, still don't know. It'd be interesting to see how it looked. And uh, this is a pretty cool Digibash from Nova Maximus. By the way, uh, you can pre-order the Fantasy model, the Ultra Magnus, from Show Z right now. I've got mine pre-ordered there, and I look forward to it. We have no idea what year it'll come out, or if it'll still even be this decade, but I put my $10 down. Okay, so getting into the KO of the Fans Toys, or it's still, it's not even, doesn't even say Fans Toys on the box. It's, it's Robot Paradise, but this is the KO of it, and it looks pretty good. Looks like the colors are pretty close, because they were saying that the colors were going to be different. This actually looks like a lighter blue, and I kind of dig it a little bit more than the blue that Fans Toys used. So, uh, maybe I'll like it more than the original. But still, even the the little mini bots like sets look really good, and they look fantastic. Great coloration to them. Here's kind of a close up, so you can kind of see the paint and the paint work and how it looks close up. Just kind of have some speckling to it. So yeah, it does look pretty good. Uh, still doesn't beat having it in hand. I can't wait to get one in hand. I've got it ordered. It should be coming in soon from TF Direct. And if you're interested, go to TF Direct. Uh, they still have a few left. So, good old Deluxe Baldwin of YouTube. So you can go to the YouTube channel Deluxe Baldwin and check out his video. Does a full review of this. I don't have it yet. And this is the Magic Square version 2 of Optimus Prime for Masterpiece Scale. There it is side by side with MP44. And just look at that. That looks good. It looks good. It almost holds its own next to MP44. You decide which one you like better. Just looking at this, which one do you like better? Uh, you can nitpick pieces here and there and say this is better on this one, this is better on that one. But either one, they both look great. I mean, we have, we're living in a time where you get a bunch of great options. And one more of Deluxe's pictures I wanted to show. 
and that was how clean the cab is in the back so if if you know the MP44, it's not that clean. This one is way cleaner, so it does look pretty good in both modes. And so, yeah, it's, it's pretty good overall, and I look forward to getting my hands on it. And you wonder, why are they doing a 2.0? Well, because Prime sells, that's why. Where's their Megatron? Okay, KFC. <laughs> they have uh, put up some pictures of what's going to be a BotCon 2022 exclusive. This is uh, from Agabus, I guess, and it's going to be the... P-6X Shard, and it's got a whole bunch of different colors to it, very colorful, interesting, I don't know the story behind it, but I just see it, and there it is, we just got the renders to it. Here is the alt mode, and just interesting, I don't know, this is like the 11th version of this mold, and it still looks cool, so they all, every version looks pretty cool. Speaking of X-Transbots, I did not talk about the dealer room, because a lot of stuff we saw already at the dealer room, but this stuff here is actual prototypes for what we're going to get with the their punch counter punch they call it james and bond uh this is their quintesson and then their uh abaddon 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 or abaddon and that is going to be their galvatron now i don't really like the pose that they posed galvatron in maybe that is because maybe it doesn't pose well i don't know but it looks like you could have done some better poses to make them look a little cooler Overall, it does look good, though. I mean, I really think that one does look pretty good. Let's take some closer looks at each of these real quick. We do see that this punch counter punch. Now, these are very, very early prototypes, so don't expect them out anytime soon. But they're further along than other ones that they've got. So I think this does look pretty good. It doesn't look like it'd be the end of the world transformation-wise. I'm just curious how they pull off the the two-in-one bot mode gimmick. So trying to look at this, to since it is a prototype, kind of figured out and well I just can't exactly figure it out yet but uh here's a better look at Abaddon which uh does look good it's gonna get fans toys a run for the money that's for sure and a lot of people will say hey the the fans toys one is is the best one ever but we won't know till we get this in our hands right so seriously or till we get to cars then we have over here we've got the run amok and runabout and they look okay kind of exactly what you'd expect with kind of what they're doing with the car bots i wonder how much shared engineering they use from this and all the other car bots that they're putting out around the same time i'm sure there's at least you know about six or a dozen parts that are similar and then looking at the construct cons they do look great uh, i actually am looking to replace my combined mode so i might be on it just depending if they're all 100 bucks a piece though i don't know so price is definitely going to be a, a factor are they going to be a hundred bucks a piece? I don't know. We'll find out. So we got more pictures of the trans art BWM09. This is this is a Cheetor Beast Wars uh, 2, Beast Trans Metals 2. So it does look pretty good. Uh, I think that this is going to look really good painted. So the grayscale probably is not as impressive. But one thing about trans art is they do a fantastic job painting their figures. Not only are the designs good, designs are good. But the paint is like phenomenal so that's where i think it's going to take a major turn on this but if you're really not into trans metal or even beast wars then you probably won't be into this but it does look cool three zero is putting out a teaser pick for their deluxe collectible premium figure here and it's going to be 11.2 inches tall 53 points of articulation and of course it's megatron and so the thing about this is that they usually put out one picture like a teaser and the next week we just get flooded with them so uh it looks pretty good if you're in on the movie stuff uh, no price yet but it's gonna be expensive in the hundreds probably <laughs> but uh but they have a lot of detail and a lot of paint work and a lot of work goes into it non-transforming as usual and that's just the way things go but if you're in on this start looking out for this thing i hear pre-orders actually sell out pretty fast too so I don't really have any legend stuff. This is actually sub legends. It's smaller than legends, but this is the Doctor Wu. That stuff that's going on right now. And this their sword dancer. This is a recolor, and I'm not really sure. I think that one of them's one color, one's the other color. I can't tell the difference. They look almost exactly the same to me. Slightly different grays on the torso, but really not much different to me. Just an excuse to put it back out, I guess. If you missed it, then you might want to get in on it. This is what they look like cassettes. They should fit in your. Uh, what, what the, like a siege and an earthrise sound wave or well actually it would be not, not sound wave it'd be uh blaster and then here's the alt modes so it's technically triple changers quadruple changers because they combine together i guess in a way so but triple changers uh looking pretty good overall if you miss out this set you can get it now so i'm putting on a recolor of this mc03 but calling it p for pink i believe i guess 
It's called Little Monster, and they did a blue one before. I don't know how many colors they're going to make of this, but once you got the mold, you know, why not, right? So uh, here it is. And this one turns into the little radio-controlled four-wheel big truck. Tiny big truck, I guess you could say. Anyway, there it is. So getting into some mainline news, there's something that they released at some uh, SDCC London or something like that, or SD... L -L 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 I don't know. It's a Comic-Con in London, right? So, Leader Holiday Optimus Prime, and I don't really know how, how to order it. You, you can pre-order this stuff starting on November 1st, theoretically, but it's kind of a candy cane color of Optimus Prime, but it's not the like G1 Earthrise one. It's a different one, so it's one of the movie ones. So, uh, still looks pretty cool and interesting overall. If you're in on this, then you might be in on it. I don't know. A lot of these holiday ones are kind of fun if you're in for it. Now, this isn't really the greatest picture, but this is a much better picture of the actual product. They didn't have a good, solid picture of the bot mode, just a good, solid picture of the alt mode. And there you go if this is something you're in for. Next up, we got the next HasLab campaign. It is that Saurus, and it is going to match up with the Victory Saber that they've already got in production. It's on the way, and it looks pretty good. It looks really smooth and clean, and I like that about figures you know it's more animation accurate and clean and smooth maybe they haven't added the detail to it yet that they added to the star saber i don't know all those facts just yet but i would think that it looks much better like this i'll leave it like this but you know, that's just my opinion here he goes with his uh, alt mode and it looks just like that source i mean we've got an mmc one coming and we've got the x translos one coming and they're both around the you know 180 200 price point this is 180 and so, so really, it's if you want it scaled down for Chug, then go with this one. If you want a Masterpiece scale one, go with one of the other options. But if you've already got the Victory Saber coming, then you're probably going to be in on this. He also is going to come with a throne. Now, I'm not sure if the throne's unlockable yet and all this. I will have to dig a little bit deeper, and I might make a full-on video of this. Just kind of see where it goes. In the As soon as I heard about this, I checked it, and it already had 1,400, <laughs> 1400 backers. I don't know right now how many, but uh, I, it will probably back pretty quick, so... They need 11,000 backers, though, at $180. So think about that. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. So they're doing a third reissue of this Jetfire, this Siege Commander Jetfire. This thing's been commanding like 150 bucks on eBay. And so it's good for the consumer. It's now only going to be like 90 bucks. You order it pre-order somewhere, it's 90 Originally came out, it was 80 And a little story about that. It came out at 80 and I ordered mine from TF Source, got it for 80. That was back before they charged me tax too. And then I found them in Walmart for 44 bucks. They showed up at Walmart and immediately were 44 bucks. So that was real confusing about it. So kind of like we don't see, we can't have nice things at Walmart. Is that, is that what's going on? But I don't understand. Like why would this show up and immediately get discounted and clearance? But uh, I don't know. But now you can get it for 90. We've got in-hand pictures of the Studio Series Ironhide. This is the all new mold. And somebody said it was like 34 four dollars now so they just keep raising the price on these but uh here's the thing i didn't know he was voyager i thought he was going to be the the other one wasn't voyager it was deluxe but we got a better bang for a buck i think so look how small he is in a voyager box though so anyway uh yeah there's ironhide showing up starting to show up so if you are looking for it or if you're in on this start looking for it. this is showed up in new york all right, so Super 7 showing off the next wave of their reactions for good old Transformers. And, you know, this we've seen some of this because we saw the back, the card back. But, yeah, that, that Unicron, based on the toy design, was a really good idea. That's pretty cool. Uh, but maybe we'll get another Unicron that looks like Unicron, but that's an interesting one. It would be nice if somebody actually made the prototype. Well, they, like, they actually released what you could have had back then, but... But it wasn't a very good toy. They knew it wasn't good, so they didn't release it. But anyhow, pretty interesting piece of history you can own there. we got a Cyclonus. We've got a Sharpticon. We've got Quintesson, which you might want a few of those. And then we get Ultra Magnus and a Junkion. They're promoting the Rise of the Beast movie, and it does seem to be interesting. I would look forward to seeing it. I hope it lives up to the hype. Seems like it is way overdue for a Transformer movie to come out. But when it does, sometime next year, hopefully... And I look forward to seeing it. So it looks really interesting with the areas, the landscapes, and kind of the, the places that they decided to film. And, of course, the digital CGI that's going to go into it. 
Okay, so there's always a bunch of Transformers news. Now there's a bunch of other news going on right now. So we did get a lot of news that came out of the 1027 event, and I'm going to kind of touch on that as we go through each property. But Thursday night, they talked about this. This is the Golden Age, and it's the Honor Among Thieves line. And so here we are with the boxes. I mean, I don't like the boxes, but he, I don't think it's going to sell well. I just don't think that people are going to watch that movie and go, hey, I want I want figures from it. But I might be wrong, but I just don't see it selling well. I see that the ones based off the cartoon are going to sell very well. I don't think these will. But we're going to go through them real quick anyway. Okay, so I really don't know all of the names of these characters. I think this one's called Edgin. But even zooming out of the box art, it's really hard to make out exactly what the names are. But uh, yeah, it looks... It looks okay, it looks like an okay figure, but will we have the ties to it to want to buy it? Maybe, but interesting looking. I think Hasbro does do a good job with the sculpts. Is that really Chris Pine? Pretty close. So I might be wrong, I think this one's called Holga, and she looks like a warrior, princess kind of thing. I don't really know what's going on with her either. And they're all going to have their own little select, like one's a thief and one's a magician or something like that. So uh, with all that kind of stuff going on, one's a warrior. But yeah, looks like a figure, kind of what you'd expect to see from the movie. This one here, I, I can't even make it out of the box. It looks like Shazam or something like that. But anyway, it does look pretty interesting right there. This must be the magician kind of character that they're going to have in there. So I'm really super stoked that they're making the cartoon versions and that we're not just getting these. So I'm really excited about that. I mean, I'm glad we're getting these. I mean, maybe the kids will get into it. People who watch the movie will get into it. That, that's kind of cool. They're also going to be releasing a dragon, and so the thing about this is supposed to be targeting the kids. All of these are targeting the kids, theoretically. Collectors get their own, the cartoon versions, but with this, kind of makes me start to wonder how deep they're going to go with dragons. Would we get a Tiamat down the road? That's possible, but if they're putting this out, why couldn't they put a Tiamat out? That just doesn't make sense to me, but maybe it does make sense. Maybe this is going to be the base of a future Tiamat that just remold a few things. Who knows? Looks like a really awesome looking dragon, though. That looks fantastic. And then there's these these little dice that turn into animals, dice beast animal things. So at first I thought it was really stupid. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, well, they're kind of interconnecting both of the worlds. You know, the, the game playing and the toys and the cartoon, I guess, a bit, and the movie. But they transform into stuff like this. So you get another little dragon and play features. You know, this is something fun kids would like. Kids would love this. You know, and it's almost like blind box, which you're going to see on the box, of course, what it turns into. But that's cool. That is kind of cool. You can pick one up. Which one is this? I forgot. Oh, yeah, that's what the one is. Moving on to some G.I. Joe. There was the 1027 live stream that really wasn't live, actually. But anyway, that thing was going on, and they did show up these, these two-ups that they used to... The sculptors sculpt them, and then they shrink them down and make them to the 3.75 inch scale. So these are actually 6 inch figures, so these would actually scale almost well with your already existing classified. Of course, they have the rudimentary design and look like the O-rings from back in the day, but they use this to say that Chuckles is the next name reveal, name only reveal, but it's just cool. I like stuff like this. It's really interesting to see stuff like this out and about. And it'd be kind of fun to have these. When I first saw this, before you know the 11 to 12 minutes of just talking before they get to it, uh, I was just sitting there thinking, are they introducing a new, very low-end $5 figure line? You know what? If they made 6-inch versions of vintage figures super cheap, that'd be awesome. But that's not what it was. It's a classified reveal. So there's also more reveals. They have this 2-pack of female... Uh, troopers, there's an officer and a trooper, and so I don't know price point, availability, and all that kind of stuff just yet, but it's interesting. It's one of those things that it's either going to be well received and loved and people will troop build it and just completely ignored by others. So it's, I think it will be very polarizing, but at the end of the day, I think it's cool. Uh, I'm definitely going to pick one up. I don't know if I pick up like six sets, especially since they're way overpricing these closed box two packs. So. Uh, that's a whole story for another day. Now, uh, let's look at this Big Ben. Is that what it is? Big Ben? Yeah. And so with it, he does come with quite a bit of stuff there, and he does look pretty cool. I don't have the figure. I don't think I've ever owned the G1 figure, so it really means nothing to me. 
but I'm that sucker that'll probably pick it up anyway. But, uh, that's pretty cool overall. I think this goes a little bit later in the line. We got our first look at in-hand images of Zorana, and I think it looks really good. It's a very nice looking figure overall. I thought she looked good from the digital renders and all that kind of stuff, but to see the actual figure looking pretty good. And I have her, I had her as a kid. I've got both of the different head variations of her. Not that I was really going after it, but found her pretty easy. And so she's not even that expensive of a vintage figure, but she is cool. And I, I do like the Dreadnoughts, so I will be going deep on the Dreadnoughts. Here we go with Zartan getting really close to his sister or his cousin. I forgot, but uh, they're getting close there. And yeah, that's that's pretty nice looking figure overall. And 1027 around 7 p.m. Central, they put more uh, Mindbenders and Serpentors up for pre-order. Now, the thing about it is that I, I really thought it was going to sell out fast again. But maybe it's because it's a Thursday night, nobody was expecting it out of the blue, and so people just missed it. They slept on it, they didn't check their social media, they were probably tired from working on Thursday or whatever, and then come to find out Friday, everybody just talking about how they sold out. Uh, was it was it Wednesday night? Whatever 27 was. Maybe it was Wednesday night. Thursday night. One of those nights. Anyhow, I tried to put out on social media, uh, on my community tab, to let people know several of my viewers were able to get theirs. Uh, Geek Dad Life and uh, Mega J Retro did live streams talking about it and even showing that, hey, they're still in stock 15 minutes later, so it's pretty good. They were up for about five hours, and so with that, that's a long time for uh, an exclusive on Hasbro Pulse. But a lot of people were getting upset. And it's just round three of I'm selling my whole collection because I missed it. <laughs> round three. But uh, but I, I did just get my my Tiger Force Outback canceled. So I'm going to have to sell my whole collection because I missed it. You know, the funny thing is people are really upset about this cancellation of Tiger Force Outback. But 98% of the comments when they first announced it were hating on it because it wasn't the original. I hate this thing. Why would you make this? Blah, blah, blah. Now people are I'm mad because it's canceled. So I think that's it for G.I. Joe classified news. And the, the next thing is on the NECA store. It's on thenecastore.com. I think it's the exact. But you get this exclusive Garax, Garax figure. And he looks pretty good. He's going to be a special uh, repaint that looks more like the G1 toy, which by the way, is what I would kind of want collecting this line. I'm in on the ones that look very classic. And I don't even have all the classic figures. I have them, well, I have them all, but I don't have them all complete. That, there's a difference. But uh, this does look good. And it's 30 bucks, 29 99 plus, of course, taxes and shipping. And they'll charge you one shipping charge, so you, you go through and order all the stuff that you want. Good thing for me, I want the other thing, and that was this right here. So I want to say that I'm not usually in on accessory packs. I usually just don't care about accessories. But some of these accessories are just so awesome that I have to get it. So first off, it's the only way you're going to get Einstein, my understanding. And it's the only way you're going to get plutonium, the Nike mags with no Nike swoosh, and the, uh, what was it, kind of a, a, a suitcase to put them in, I guess. And, and a bunch of oddball stuff like head sculpts and uh, remotes and these kinds of things. So pretty cool it's 35 bucks i don't really know if it's worth 35 bucks it's like worth a whole figure to get the accessory pack but i pre-order anyway and i put mine on a payment plan so it's like 20 bucks every couple of weeks there's just not a whole lot of motu news going on this week it's there's been enough in the past but here we go with good old evil in and this is showing her this is a different version of evil in that's coming out so there's box packaging and all that kind of stuff but at the end of the day, I really just, I'm not going to lie, I only really care about the classic looking figures. I want her to look as classic as possible, and I, I'll i probably pick her up, but I really want the most classic look possible. She does look pretty decent, I'm just not exactly sure what they're going for with her, but she looks okay. She's kind of cool, but I, we're going to get a whole swarm of this stuff when the next version of the figures come out, this revelation. Next, I want to give my thoughts on Super 7 here. And these are $55 figures, uh, next generation. Uh, starting at the bottom left, we've got Data, which comes with a bunch of stuff, and he looks pretty good. I, I, I do not think that Super 7 figures look bad at all, so the look is fine. Uh, going over to number one, or Riker, is it Riker, number one? 
Uh, he looks good too. I love this show, and all the accessories are spot on, point on. But the figures are kind of simple and bland, and I, I just think that they'll be able to completely reuse these bodies over and over and over, right? Like with all the different characters. I don't, I don't know. Looks like the same body on Data and Riker, but maybe I'm wrong. Just different pay scheme. And then we got Locutus at the top right, which it's so strange, deep cut they go into Locutus right away. But we already talked about that. But then we go to Guinan, which is another really deep cut in Wave One. So I think she looks pretty good now. What I remember from Guinan was that she was able to tell the future. So Guinan, why did you not tell me how bad 2021, 2022 were going to be with uh, forcing the energy prices up on purpose? And just recently, outlawing fertilizer so that we can starve the country, right? And why didn't you tell me about all this stuff? But but what I want to know is about the the, the fact. Those are the facts. But the conspiracy theory about will we be forced to eat insects? Will we have cricket patties? Please tell me. How can I find out? She says, watch the view. And with Star Wars, there's just not a whole lot either, but there's Artillery Stormtrooper for the Vintage Collection. It's going to be up for pre-order, and I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this guy, but another Stormtrooper repaint. I don't need all these different recolors, but some people love them and eat them up, so that's what they're there for. I'm going to have a huge amount of gaps in my Vintage Collection because they're making a lot of stuff that I just don't care about. But uh, if you care about this, jump on it right now, wherever you pre-order it. Also, there's this figure here, this Dejarin Morak figure. So this should be up for pre-order or shipping soon, something along those lines. Uh, we've seen it before, but somehow it's making the news again. So uh, now it's coming up for pre-order. I think they did a much better job with the head sculpt, but then again, when you open the box, I mean, surprise, surprise. We don't know really yet. So uh, the packaging, the closed box packaging, I'm not going to talk about it that much anymore, but it's destroying collecting entirely. It really is. It's destroying the whole hobby, but uh, there's a Cal Kestis. I need to get the picture of that, and then we'll talk about that in a second. So talking about Boba Fett right here, Boba Fett, this is the deluxe one that was like 35 bucks, and I already have it, but it's repackaged for this, and I would much rather have it in this, and so I'm torn because... Uh, I was thinking maybe I can just resell my other one to pay for this. I don't even think you can get your 35 bucks out of it. I mean, what are you paying? What are you selling for like 18 bucks? The old old one to buy this one? I don't know. It's just crazy. This is really the only way I want to buy a Black Series figure going forward, but they don't allow that. You got to wait for the figure to be two years old, and then they put it on this card back, and then, well, Boba Fett never sits. He always sells like 87 different versions, and he sells well, but... Uh, this is the card back I like the most too. I mean, even though it's probably not the most valuable vintage card back, when you look at vintage card back, it's the one I like the most because it's the one I had as a kid. It's the one I identify with. I identify as Jedi. And another Cal Kestis figure. I just don't really know uh, how many versions they've made. I hear this is a whole new body sculpt and everything for Cal Kestis, and I think it's kind of silly, to tell you the truth. Like, they're making a third version of sort of an obscure video game character. And I don't even think that game sold that many copies. Was that really that popular? But, I mean, it's okay. But I, I just don't understand what's going on with Black Series these days. So I can't explain it to you. Anyway, uh, this figure will be coming up. I have both other versions. I don't know why I'd need the third one. And I bought them both for my son. And he doesn't even seem to care about them anymore. So, anyhow. I don't have much more Star Wars news to share with you this week. Uh, we probably will next week. There's supposed to be some sort of event coming up soon for more Star Wars news. But... I'll probably just be confused the whole time about why they're even talking about what they're talking about and putting out what they're put out. But, uh, but you know, it's kind of nice to take a break from collecting Star Wars for a while. So I, I will thank them for that. So let me know what you think about this week's weekly news and review. What else is going on out there that I missed? What other cool things are going on in the toy world or anything in the world? Like and subscribe and Tidarium Hanger out. <laughs>